Hello people, and um, a bit of a different video today. I thought, I mean, personally, I do prefer when people, I mean, when I can also take a look at cards uh, in the video, rather than just looking at myself and um, in a screen. So today we'll, we'll not show that much data as much as we were used to, but uh, for that obviously there's a whole video and there's there'll be more video coming. But uh, we'll talk about, obviously from the title, about temporal forces. And I'll give you my take on it. I'll, I'll give you some personal opinions as well as some some data, some some facts. So before we get started, I as always, I wrote in down some notes. I mean, let me take a look at them. So first of all, there's going to be a box break uh, on temporal forces. It'll be the first week of April. I think between the first and the second week of April, around the tenth. And uh, as always, it'll be two euros per pack. If you're new, first of all, welcome. We're in the European Union. I mean, I'm in the European Union. And here on the channel, we like to focus on both the European and the American side as well. So we, we try to include as many people as possible. So also, there, there's actually also going to be um, a Crown Zenith uh, pack, pack opening on the channel. The, the problem is I bought, I, I did buy a 60 dBs and we're gonna break at least three, I think, on, on the channel. Problem is, and um, I think I'll never buy from this seller again. They're 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 a, actually a large European seller. Uh, they display them on their website as available now, so I bought them. Uh, later on, to discover that they they still didn't have them in stock, and they were waiting for the pallet to arrive. That's why they told me in the email. And uh, I think um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's uh, illegal. It might be. But I think it's very unprofessional and uh, it's um, just not not fair from an ethical point of view. Business is business, but I mean, I don't know what you think. Uh, but uh, w when I heard when they told me it wasn't available, uh, but they displayed it uh, on the website said available now, but it wasn't uh, pretty pretty upsetting. But um, yeah, sorry guys. I otherwise, we would have done it uh, yesterday. This video is going to come out on a Sunday today, Saturday, and um, that that was the plan. So. Sorry about that. So temporal forces, that being said, yeah, we can start talking about temporal forces. So I've seen different opinions about it and uh, some people love it, some people hate it. I did mention earlier that uh, I'm a bit biased. I grew up with Gen 5. I have, I do have Cobalion indeed from the black and white era, the full art Cobalion. And um, obviously, you know, with the future Pokemon, Iron Crown, Iron, Leaf and Iron Boulder. I shouldn't have ditched the names. I'll, I'll pop it up, obviously. Uh, I didn't just want you to look at this old cardboard. I'll pop up some, some images. Uh, I love them. I think your artwork is great. Um, it appears that I think it was Iron Crown that does find a, some playability. I think it was the Iron, um, Iron Hands. EX deck, I uh, might be mistaken, but I did read something about the playability of Iron Crown, which is why it is uh, the most expensive card. And um, those three, I love the artworks. The other three, the ancient uh, Pokemon, uh, the Gaijin Fire, the Origin Bolt, and the Walking Wake, Sukun and Tang and Raikou practice version. I also love them. And um, I mean, I. Artwork wise, I do prefer the future version, uh, but I think I think I think I might get some hate on it. Uh, but uh, all these color and violets main set that we have so far, I think, and obviously, if I say I think, it is my personal opinion. I'm not sure in some data, but I think this is the best set when it comes to artworks uh, that we've had. Uh, in this Scarlet Violet era. I think it's better than Poldi Evolved. The fact that we have less SIR than Poldi Evolved, I think it makes it better because they are less, or just six Pokemon SIRs. And I think it's also four or five um, trainer, um, especially Station Rare. I don't remember exactly right now, but uh, the six SIR Pokemon SIR, I think they're far better than the SIR from any other Scarlet and Violet sets, and uh, if you take a look at Ultras, you also have the Gengar EX, which I know Gengar is a fan favorite Pokemon. If you look at the Hyper Rare, you only have the six Pokemon uh, that are displayed in the SIR rarity, and 
I think overall it's a great set. I might be mistaken. Right now it is selling for around um, around 100 euros in the European Union and uh, similar prices 1 105, 110 in the US, which is which is interesting. Um, it's um, it's basically what we've seen throughout these common by the era. But that's one thing, and that's the main takeaway that I want to give you guys for today's video. So. In a market where the uh, EMH, it's called in English, the efficiency market uh, hypothesis is, is valid. And what does it mean? It means that every information available to the public is already displayed into the price of um, the asset. So in, in this case, every information that we know about the cards in the set, the print, um, the print run of the set and um, everything, is already split in the price. So how come the price of temporal forces could go from 100 to 200? Well, expectations, that's what changes and that's what will drive the price different. Will it get to 200? I, I have no idea. So it is supply against demand. What? So I was planning uh, to make a video on it, uh, which I think I will next week maybe. But I uh, just wanted to, to, to point out there, it, it's all about expectations. The price of something depends obviously on the value, but it's how we value it. I could value temporal forces right now higher than it is. I personally don't. As of right now, I think it, it is where, where it belongs. But uh, what, what, what is important is future expectations. If I expect it to, to go higher, then as an investor, not a collector, or a Pokemon lover, but if you're talking about investment, when it talks to investability, uh, then I will buy it because my future expectations are upside. If I don't expect future appreciation, I will not buy it. And uh, that's basically how financial assets and decision are made. If you expect something to be higher in value, to be greater in value in X amount of time, then if you can, if you want, if you're willing to take the risk, it's all about risk, assessing risk, then you will buy it. Now, this is not, I'm not telling you go buy temporal forces. If you expect it to go higher, um, it's a financial decision. If you may, if you do it as a financial activity, uh, but if you do it as a collectible, then uh, you do you. But um, that's, that's what I have to say on it. So also what, what I heard about uh, temp temporal forces or temporal forces, no, no, not quite sure the, how you should pronounce it, is uh, you did have a pretty amount of video before the release talking about print run and how it was lower compared to other s &V, uh, sets. Now, is that true? I have no idea. I do not have access to uh, distributors. And then, well, all I can see is from a European standpoint, when you take a look at the number of boxes available in the market, and all I can do that by taking a look, as we like to do here on the channel, uh, we like to take a look at supply. If you take a look at supply on car market right now, it, it looks like you have as many boxes as you have in all the other Scarlet Valley sets. So, is it going to be a short printed? Uh, we don't know, but uh, again, it all comes to expectations. Let's say you do think it's short printed and you buy, then you're buying it. One of the reasons you're buying it, it's because you think it's short printed. Um, so you expect future growth. Well, because of that reason could be also other reason because of that. So it, again, a lot, a lot of, a lot of it comes down to future expectations. So another thing I, I want to mention is to, to join the Discord. It's fully free. If you like talking about cardboard, if you like Pokemon, and if you want to join a growing community of European and non-European people who love Pokemon, then um, I guess it's a place for you. So that was it. And please let me know about the new format if you enjoy it or not. And uh, I hope to see you soon on the Discord and on the Pax Break of Temporal Forces. And uh, for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.